What is going on guys? Chump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. On the last video, I built this custom DIY solar pergola that I'm gonna be obviously multi-purposing for hanging out under here with some lawn furniture and running crypto miners off of solar off grid, right? But I do need to button this thing up and I need to get this all wired up. So first things first, I need to make a template to cut all of these ends and lop off the extra that I had hanging over. I did that just in case I needed to expand a little bit further than I actually measured so I didn't run into any hiccups. So we gotta get this all trimmed up and make it look all fancy. Then I wanna go over exactly what this unit cost me to build and we'll start Start wiring this thing obviously I got to run the wire across the ground I don't know if I'll get to that in this video but they're all gonna be wired up in series in two different strings again bottom and top going all the way back to the trailer so I do have to get again them all connected together and I got to drill a couple holes or maybe loop underneath the actual uh, beams here or joists whatever you want to call them I'm really not entirely sure what I'm gonna do at this point but nonetheless let's just get cutting let's get a template made and we'll uh, yeah we'll get this thing all jigsawed up so this is the plan got a piece of cardboard straightest piece I could find that is definitely big enough now I'm gonna take this scrap cut of the 2x8 right we're gonna stick it on here I'm gonna trace it and then I'm going to draw some sort of nice fancy end so this is what I came up with I think we're gonna do this I measured down three and a half on this side and over four inches on this side and I actually connected the lines at the top of a bucket I was gonna use that Bondo container but it wasn't big enough so use that and uh, I think that should be pretty nice over there now we just gotta kind of I guess line it up and hopefully it looks good all right, so I measured over 16 and a half from there over to the tip here and I traced the template. I think that's what I'm gonna do all the way down. It gives a couple inches out in front of the panel. It's exactly what I want. I'm gonna do the same thing up top, right? But right here is the only spot that I'm not sure of, right? So I did measure from here to here 16 and a half and that way it'll be like, you know, the same length as these, but it just looks different because it's straight. So I don't know if it's gonna be too long you guys let me know what you think about it but I think I'm gonna do this and cut it right there because I can always cut it back further if I don't like it versus going too short and then hating it because it's too freaking short but I did end up uh, butting this up here just to see what that would look like and trace that but yeah I don't think I'm gonna go with that mark so we can uh, leave that and if you guys didn't know tape measures this rubber shit by the way I just found this out acts as an eraser to erase the freaking lines on wood Ain't that crazy? I had no idea that's what this grip was for. Anyways, all right guys, I will, uh, yeah, let's get this cut up and we'll see what it looks like. That template worked phenomenally. Now I just gotta mark the rest of them and I gotta uh, obviously chop the rest of them, but yeah, it came out really, really freaking good. Super excited about that. I used this little M18 uh, jigsaw. This thing is the balls, by the way. I bought this a long time ago and I really don't have many uses for it, but this thing's actually amazing. A couple hours later, what do you guys think? Look how it came out, actually phenomenal. All the cuts are done. I did the front and the back side. As you can see, a couple inches overhanging off of each panel. Now the only thing I can't decide what I wanna do is right here. Now this is a bit longer than I would like, I think. I might cut it back probably halfway, but if you look at it from the angle, this way and this way are exactly the same length. So I really can't decide. I just didn't want to cut it too short and then be pissed that I cut it too short. So I think I'm going to leave it like that for the time being and then maybe change it at a later date. But nonetheless, that is awesome. And I'm happy that it came out this way. Now, the last thing that I need to do today is I want to get all of these chained together. So I got the positive and negative on each side of the panels. I need to loop them together and I couldn't decide how I wanted to do it. I was debating whether to drill a hole in between here, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to do is try to see if these will extend and reach underneath these bird's mouths right here where the cuts are in between these two beams that way everything's kind of hidden inside here and they can all connect nice and neat um, the only issue actually up here is it's a bit farther so i don't know if they're going to be able to reach up there but let's give it a shot see what happens and uh, go from there check this out worked phenomenally these wires are actually way longer than i thought they worked perfectly going in between the beams here so i'm going to neaten them up i actually neatened up the top ones i only cut the left side and it actually reached over to where the uh connection is there which is pretty cool so i have um, that all situated everything is connected all the way down and i actually ran a 
I think it's a 50 foot run, if I'm not mistaken, of this red wire right here. And that's actually going to the positive on the furthest panel all the way over here. You guys can kind of see it. Let me zoom in a bit. Right about there, all connected up. I zip tied it in the uh, that section there and then, I don't know if you guys can kind of see, but through the beam, it is all the way down. I know it's kind of dark and tough to tell, but it is there, I promise, all the way down. Now, looking at the connections, I actually rigged up something right here on my uh, multimeter, testing the voltage of this row of panels. We're at 270 volts, exactly what I was thinking it was gonna be, which is amazing. So again, I just got the thing twinned right here, kind of rigged it up to a female or a male connector on the negative side and a female connector on the positive side, and it worked out perfectly. So for wattage on the top row of panels here, we're looking at a maximum with the 495 watts per panel bifacially, right? 100 on the back side, 395 on the top side. We're looking at 3,960 between that and 3,160. That's only with the top, nothing from the bifacial backside. 3,160 is still triple the amount of solar wattage that I actually have on my other setup as of right now for uh, both these rows, right? It'll be 6,000, I only have 2,000 max over on my other setup, so that is amazing. The extra 100 watts from the backside is just a plus, and hopefully I will get a lot of that before noontime in the morning, reflecting off the fence and such on the underside, but now let's get into what did this unit actually cost me a lot of people were asking how much this build actually was entirely so what i'm going to do right now is break down every piece of the wooden structure minus the solar stuff you guys can go and check out signature solar if you're interested in this solar kit that i do have and if you haven't seen that initial video go check it out i'll leave a link above but let's go over all the wood and what it actually cost me to build this so first things first, this entire parts list is going to be in a Google Sheets down in the description below with prices all broken down of what this project cost me exactly, as well as some Amazon links. If you guys can't find any of these post anchors or these L brackets that I actually used here in this build. So on the first part, we used eight five gallon buckets. Those cost me four dollars and 48 cents a piece. Then I needed 16 bags of 50 pound quickcrete. That is the red bag. Those cost me six dollars and 98 cents per bag. I had eight six by six post anchors. Those were a four pack purchased on Amazon for $45.99 per pack. Then I purchased four six by six by 12 pressure treated posts. Those were $50.78 per post. And then we also needed four six by six by eight pressure treated posts that were $31.38 per post. Now, here on the second part of this build, we ended up using eight two by eight by 12 pressure treated boards that were $17 and 38 cents a piece on the right and the left side. The four in the middle connecting the middle points were actually two by eight by 10 pressure treated boards. Those cost me $14 and 28 cents a piece. So now this next part here with all the braces coming down to support the solar panels, I actually needed an additional 17 two by eight by 12 pressure treated boards. Again, $17 and 38 cents per board. So for the final 45 cuts and the final brace across the right and the left side from front to back, I ended up using four two by eight by eight pressure treated boards, $11.28 to connect the front to the back. Again, sandwiched on each side and the 45 degree cuts, I cut two foot sections out of four four by six by eight pressure treated posts, $19.28 per post. So now there is a list of bolts and materials that I used throughout the rest of this build. As you guys could see, lag bolts on the 45 degree angles, lag bolts up here. Now what I did on the beams going straight across front and back, the horizontal that I called them, I did end up putting a three inch lag bolt on one side and then on the opposite side I actually ended up doing a five inch lag bolt and that ended up working out perfect for what I needed. I did that on every single board so I would do three inch on one side five inch on the other seemed to work out the best for me. Now these vertical boards that I have here actually angling the solar panels I ended up taking the four and a half inch uh, quarter inch lag bolt and I drilled a hole straight down through the top of the board just above this beam right here and I sunk it into that beam right down through so it was uh 
not protruding above the top of this so the panel could actually sit flush. So that's a little trick I did there. Now to get this entire thing square as I was building this, because I actually didn't really explain that too well, to be honest, in the video, I measured off of the face of this to here and I think it was about 14 or 14 and a half inches right to the face of the panel so I went over here and I did the same thing 14 and a half inches and that would get the face of this panel square with the front of this unit and then obviously I adjusted this guy left or right to get it centered completely on these panels and then I did the same thing all the way down about I think it was 14 and a half like I said off the beam to the face of the solar panel made sure it was stuck together and everything was completely square now the last but not least are these 20 millimeter uh, little L brackets that I have here that is what I actually use to tie down these panels they are being wood screwed in the side obviously into the wood and then I had some self tapping number seven pan screws that I got from Home Depot in a box basically mounting them on every single joist so there is eight brackets L brackets per panel I know this isn't really part of the build, but if you guys want to do the solar panel thing, this is how I did it, and I'm hoping that that will work out perfect for you guys as well. There's four at the top, four at the bottom, so that's why those are there. Now, again, this entire list is going to be priced out down in the description below, as well as the uh, you know the posts that I have down there from Amazon. I got these L brackets from Amazon, so links for those will be there as well. So I'm hoping that whole breakdown actually made sense to you guys and it actually put things into perspective of how much this thing actually cost me to build. If you didn't see the whole DIY video where I built this step by step, please go check that out. I'll leave a link here. The main reason I built it the way I built it without four foot sonar tubes in the ground is because I wanted it to be a temporary structure. If I ever need to take this thing down and move it, I don't have four foot sauna tubes in the ground. I could just unbolt these six by sixes, pull the bucket out and it's good to go. But nonetheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the summer. I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.